Blog Talk Radio. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. Om Shabbat Shalom, Holy Way of the Most High. Om Shabbat Shalom, I sense your presence. And I am the light within your soul In the essence of truth and right Love makes the circle whole And here we stand in line Waiting for some sacred sign But to find the balance is the purpose of this time to restore the balance of the universal mind And in the presence of my Lord of light and love Everything I see aspiring to be free And when I call to thee And come on bending knee Surrender to the all-pervading light and love Reflections of the one surrounding me with love And I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence I sense your presence Within and without, above and below, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. Without and within, below and above, yeah, yeah. East, west, north, and south, I sense your presence. I sense your presence. Bye. 
Joining me here tonight on Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour. My name is Jesse Ann Nichols George, and I'm your hostess this evening. The music you were listening to at the beginning of the show is I Sense Your Presence. It's by Shemshai, a great little um, individual group of people that I met while I was in the Sedona, Arizona area. And they're, of course, living their dream, traveling the world. And you can certainly, by the way, catch up with more of their music and what they're doing uh, through Facebook as well as their website, shemshai.com. That's www.shimshai. And I know that oftentimes, too, they do uh, occasionally put out free downloads as well. So it's definitely worth checking them out. They're uh, just an incredible breath of music in there, breath of work in there, shall we say. I want to extend a welcome whether you're joining us here for the first time or whether you've listened to the show, you've enjoyed it, and now you're coming back to see what we're doing tonight. We do stream live in three additional places besides Lock to Hawk Radio, and that would be Talk Stream Live, Stream Finder, and Pen, also known as Para Encounters Network. And I welcome everybody listening through those channels as well. Here at Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour, what I do is look at the different ways that compassion exists in our lives, how to remove our blocks, resistances, frustrations, and more. And then some weeks I'm discussing different aspects of how compassion is in our life, how it affects our life, the different areas of compassion. Some weeks I'm doing more exercises, practical implementations. Matter of fact, we're going to be doing a little bit of that tonight. And many times I also have guests on the show so that you can learn about their work and how other things complement and work with compassion. And then I also will highlight different musical artists along the way. Last year I had Grammy nominees Stephen Halpern and also Peter Cater on the show. Uh, this year I've had Bruce Ciccarelli on the show. Jill Matson has been on the show. We've had Claire Hedin on the show. Um, do you have some additional musical guests coming up as well this year, so look for them uh, in addition. And in my own work, what I do is I focus on helping people find and use compassion in their everyday lives. I've created the Genesis Clearing Statement, and if you've missed that, you can catch that in archive shows or through my website uh, where other people have done interviews of me. Oftentimes, I've used that in the interviews. I've also authored four books, the most recent being You, Me, Life, Dreams, and also its companion workbook. And then also uh, the first two books I put out, Activating Compassion and Activating Compassion, the workbook. In addition, I've created the Compassion Tour, which is a multi-state nationwide tour including workshops, retreats, seminars, book signings, and fundraising events. You can follow the uh, paid events to register for uh, that are directly through me, through my event site, and that's located at jessianniclesgeorge.eventbrite.com. But you also want to check my website right now under where I've got workshops and under where I've got events uh, listed, the Compassion Tour listed, because I am right now daily adding events all around the country. And when I say all around the country, I mean all around the country <laughs> right now. Uh, getting ready to do events, for example, in Solvang, California. Probably going to be adding a couple of more events in the California area. Those will be this September coming up. Um, the autumn equinox will be in Seattle, Washington. Um, I'm going to be heading east this fall. And, for example, early October, I'm going to be at um, Enchanted Realms, which is in Connecticut. I'm going to be at, uh, let's see here, where else am I going to be? I'm going to be out in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, uh, at the Enlightened Path uh, out there. I have a couple of other events probably going to be in Massachusetts. I know I'm going to be in New Jersey around the Atlantic City area, probably going to be doing some things around the District of Columbia area, um, I know I've got events lined up late November in Texas at Unlimited Thought. So lots and lots of venues and places getting added right now. Um, so you want to watch for all those that are getting added, like I said, literally daily right now being added. And just a reminder, if you enjoy the show this evening, make sure you tell your friends, you know, family, whoever you think might enjoy the show. You know, I, I share it a lot of times with my Facebook connections and my social media connections. and 
I almost always have somebody that comes through and says, man, I was just needing to work on this, or this was something I was just talking about that's, you know, it's just exactly what I needed. So you never know when you're going to shift or change somebody's life for the better uh, just by clicking that share button on there. And they can just use the same link to come into it, uh, or they can go onto my website, Jesse Ann Nichols George, the number one dot com. They can go to my tab on the Main Street Universe tab, or my page on the Main Street Universe tab, and I have all the archive shows there. They can also find the podcast in iTunes and TuneIn.com and on my YouTube channel. So lots of options for connecting and uh, locating the show in the archives. Now, before we get started on everything tonight, those that have listened in before know I like to delve into this great little book. It's called The 72 Names of God. And uh, and with that book, it kind of gives us a little insight, and I do post this on my page of the Main Street Universe tab on my website every week, so you can go back and look at it and read over it and keep grabbing that thought to work with for the week. And I love Yehuda Berg's work because it's, it's a lot like my work. He takes the big, complex topics and he breaks them down into our everyday language. And that's what he does even with the names of God that are in the book. And these are the different dimensions that are, are for us to work with. So the name that we've got tonight is Speak Your Mind. And this is going to play in perfect with our topic of chakras because... Speak Your Mind often ties into that throat chakra, which is all about being able to speak our mind (laughs) or speak our voice or as the case may be. And what he gets here in the initial message is a quote by Harry Truman, which is, I never give them hell. I just tell them the truth and they think it's hell. And he goes on to say, when you need to speak the truth but find it difficult, Utilize this name as soon as your heart starts beating rapidly. Likewise, when you need to be open to harsh truths about yourself, use this name the minute your back gets up. And the insight he gives on this is, it's difficult to be lovingly truthful with others. When an opportunity arises to confront someone with the truth, we lock up. Our hearts race and our adrenaline pumps at the mere prospect of speaking our mind. Fear of speaking or hearing the truth is the biggest stumbling block we face in our desire to experience genuinely fulfilling, honest, and loving relationships. When we hold something back, that something separates us from the other person. If we're not open to hearing the words of others without reacting or taking them personally, we have distanced ourselves from those individuals. It's always easier to tell people what they want to hear it's often more comfortable to agree with someone, even if we disagree in our hearts. And since it can be equally frightening to confront painful truths about our own selves, our friends and family may feel compelled to tell us only what we want to hear. And the meditation that he gives with this is, when you need to tell the truth, this name brings you courage to open your heart as well as your mouth. When you need to hear the truth, this name brings you strength to open your ears and close your mouth. And this is a big thing because when we look at this, this comes back to listening in a way. And if we really listen, oftentimes we can find our voice. And when we find our voice and we grow that strength and we realize that We're not doing anybody a favor by telling them strictly what they want to hear. They don't grow by that. And people will get past things. There are ways to express that don't have to be so harsh. I was just talking with people about that this week, as a matter of fact. And there's multiple ways we can do that. And and one of the things we'll be looking at tonight in relation to this is, is the chakras and the throat chakra specifically works with this set of insights from Yehuda. Uh, Again, and that's one that oftentimes we see tightened up or closed up, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Now, the common name that Yehuda gave was Speak Your Mind, and the formal name on this is Nun Tav He. Sorry, Nun Tav He. Nun Tav He is the name. 
Speak Your Mind is the common name. And again, you can find that on my page in the Main Street Universe tab on my website, jessianenicholsgeorge1.com. Now, a little something here before we take a break and delve into our topic tonight. How often do you spend tuning into your chakras? Do you sit and listen to them? Are you actively working with your chakras? Many people these days are aware of what the chakras are. Basically, in simplified terms, they're energy centers that spiral in our body and extend beyond our, your body. But there's many different thoughts as to how many we actually have. And I'm actually going to get into the show after we come back from break a little bit more beyond that description <laughs> of chakras because there's a little bit more to them than that. For me, I also see them, though, as bridges between our earthly existence and different aspects of the divine, each one radiating and vibrating with its own energy wave. Working with the chakras was one of the things I picked up early on in my studies, as one of my gifts was to notice color patterns and vibrational flows from the body. Some people call that auras. As time has gone on, I've learned that there's so much more to this set of energy centers that we are given to work with on this earth. And while each one functions independently, each one is also affected by what is happening with the others. Much like people, right? Even though each one of us functions independently, we also are affected by what's happening with others. My heart energy can function in its purpose of loving and bridging planes. However, if I'm feeling hurt or unsettled, by what I'm receiving from others through the solar plexus, then my heart chakra may also be affected. Now, there's people out there that definitely have done a great amount of work in communicating with the chakras, and you know that's been one of the areas I've really looked at because they're huge messengers. And we learn that the body is a communication tool, and it speaks to us oftentimes through the chakras as well as other aspects. And when we're dealing with a physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual challenge, a chakra or energy center is likely to be impacted besides any other aches or pains or feelings throughout the body. And in a way, you may say that the chakras are a vehicle by which our soul self and physical self communicate with each other to get our conscious human attention. And with each chakra connecting to different aspects of ourselves and our lives, it takes just a bit of practice to start to learn their language. As they say, the body never lies. And for me, this is specifically connecting to the chakras. Whatever is happening in my body, there's a chakra that's connected to it. And if I take the time to be aware of that, I can easily open to the messages that are important for me to know. What connections have you created with your chakras? How do you like to work with your chakras? Are you building a true relationship with your chakras? Some really great great questions there. This week, we're going to be focusing on a component of compassion that's related to the aspect in my books of waking up. And this reminds us to always be building our awareness, understanding, and to take time to really listen to the signs and messages that are being presented to us. I'm going to take a short break, and when we return, I'm going to be discussing how to use your senses to know your chakras, and we're going to be taking a look at all the the key chakras and doing some exercises and some various things like that as well. The song I've got for you during our break is called Do You Ever Wonder, and it's by Claire Hedin, and if you'd like to find out more about Claire's work, you can certainly do so. She's got some incredible music and incredible things happening, and You can find out uh, about her from her website, which is www.clairehedin.com, and that's C-L-A-R-E-H-E-D-I-N.com. We'll be back after this break.
pattern making too much fuss to ever find yourself so angry you just have to yell well how will you break back. You were listening to Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour, and my name is Jessie Ann Nichols-George. I'm your hostess this evening. The song you were just listening to is called Do You Ever Wonder? It's by Claire Hedin. And again, you can check out more of her work at www.clairehedin.com, and that's C-L-A-R-E-H-E-D-I-N. Dot com, And I know if some of you are listening in because of being on my mailing list tonight and you might have been expecting us to have guest Janelle Haas on this evening. And I have to apologize, she was not able to make it tonight, so we'll have to reconnect with her at another point in time. Janelle has been on my show in the past, and she received a most amazing gift um, from her husband that was a special weekend away for her anniversary. So we're certainly sending her many blessings and much joy this weekend for the celebrations that she's going through and uh, what she's getting to experience. I'm sure her heart chakra is just very, very open <laughs> with, with the experience that she's having tonight. And, and I'm sure it's just full of love this evening. So we certainly, certainly send her our best and uh, and we'll look forward to connecting with her at a different point in time along the way. Um, so in the meantime, uh, it just so happens that I have a huge background in chakras. <laughs> so I wanted to keep with that topic tonight uh, anyways because I feel like the chakras are so important in every aspect of our life and with all of the changes and all of the shifts that we've had going on in the universe and the planetary alignments were very much aligned in the heart-centered energy, which is something I was talking about a lot last week when I discussed about manifestation. And if you missed that show, it was a really awesome show and we did some um, really cool little exercises on the show and you definitely want to go back and check it out. I talked about the Lionsgate portal and things like that on it as well. So and it's definitely very, very worth doing that. And and it's kind of interesting. I was kind of laughing when um, Janelle said she had received this great gift because those that have been listening to the show every week <laughs> know that I've had just week after week after week of these incredible, amazing guests coming on. And it seems like the universe is starting to steer me in a different direction now a little bit because I will still be bringing guests on the show, yes, but it it seems like there's been a, about three weeks now in the last five that I've been running my own show. And what I find very interesting about that is that I've had a lot of feedback coming from people saying, you know what, I really love your shows. <laughs> I really love it even when you're you're handling it on your own. And I'd like to see you do more shows on your own. So I am going to honor those requests, and I will be more frequently bringing in my own shows and, and doing my own shows and bringing you my own insights and my own work because there's a huge amount of that to share with you. Uh, those that follow my work know as an integrated development specialist, uh, I blend about 50 different fields, practices, belief systems, um, all kinds of things in there in my work. And I have a lot of different techniques and I work very in the moment based on what's going on with people, what's happening with them, what their needs are. And so it's it's really fun for me actually to take hold and 
run with a topic <laughs> during the show and to open it up. And, and when I say I have a little bit of a background in, in chakras, I actually created a 14-part course on the chakras. And it incorporated working with the moon cycles and things like that. And it dealt with taking, uh, creating with the chakras and releasing with the chakras. And some people, they, they think you can only do one thing. They forget about the releasing part. And uh, as an integrated development specialist, I feel like this is important to know. Uh, the moon cycles are very important, and I mentioned that last week as well that working with our waxing and our waning moon, so whether it's growing or whether it's decreasing in size, has different influences to it. And our, our waxing moon is our creative energy. It's our time to really put ourselves out there. It's time to be proactive. It's, it's time to make ourselves known, put the energy into things. And the waning moon is when it's going from the full moon to the new moon, which is what we're on right now. And it's more of a time of receiving. It's more of a time of observing and listening and taking in things. So when we look at this in relation to the, the chakras, there's certainly going to be certain chakras that will be more active naturally during the waxing moon and certain ones that are going to be more active during the waning moon. So for example, during the waxing moon are what we call our upper chakras, which are, um, and, and we kind of look at it when we look at the chakras, and let's, let me kind of back up a little bit. The chakras, yes, they're the energy centers in the body, and, and you'll probably, if you're out there researching things and, and you're looking at things, you're going to get a big diversity of how many chakras there are and how it's pronounced. Is it chakras or is it chakras and <laughs> and all of those things? And I'm not really going to get into to those kind of details tonight because, as I said, I've already put together a 14-part course on the chakras, so I could certainly, you know, speak for weeks. <laughs> if I was to really get very in-depth. So we're going to kind of do more of an overview on them tonight with this. But, um, you know, when when we look at these things, some people will say there's seven, and some will say there's nine, and ten, and twelve, and however many else. Tonight we're going to be looking at what I would refer to as the seven primary chakras, and those are the ones that actually align with different parts of our body and that run through our body area. And there's so much more than just energy centers. They literally are a bridge between heaven and earth. They're literally a bridge between our spiritual and our physical. And it's, they're, they're centers that communicate. They're, they're energy vibrations that allow us to communicate. So everything has this movement, this energy, this vibration to it. And so when we talk about higher and lower chakras, uh, at least... When I look at them, what we're referring to is those chakras that are above or below the heart center in the body. So the heart center is our big bridge area when it comes to chakras. It is, it's oftentimes literally referred to as the bridge between heaven and earth because our upper chakras, our throat chakra, our third eye chakra, and our crown chakra all tend to do with the spiritual world. They tend to do more with intuitive things. They tend to do more with what we're putting out into the world. And um, so it's, it's kind of ironic when we think about it. To me, that's a very feminine energy because it does deal with the intuition. It does deal with the intuitive receiving, the intuitive sending, um, those more non-tangible connections. Now, when we look at the three centers below, I see those as more the, it's kind of split. They both have the masculine and the feminine energy to them in their own way. In some ways, they're more masculine energy because they're more of our raw base, physically related desires and processes that we're dealing with. So we have the solar plexus and we have the sacral chakra and we have the root chakra. And when we're looking at each of these different pieces, these are more things that are related to what we're taking in from other people. They're more our reactions, and, and the reactions are more 
masculine-based in a lot of ways. Um, some people will say, oh, no, feminine energy, that's the reactive energy. But actually the, the masculine energy is, the, is more reactive. And so it deals more with all these other things of what we're receiving from other people. So there's definitely this blend between both of them. You know, again, the upper chakras are the feminine energy in the sense that they're intuitive. They're masculine in the sense that they're what we use to be active towards other people. The lower chakras are masculine in the sense that they deal with more the physical, raw, passionate sort of side of life, but they're also feminine in the sense that that's what we're receiving. So you can see there's always that masculine-feminine balance that tends to come into play in our life, just like even in the moon cycle, even though the moon's a very feminine energy aspect, it still has a masculine and a feminine energy to it as well because the masculine energy is when it's waxing and the feminine energy is when it's waning. So it's interesting as we start to put these pieces together in different times of year, different chakras are going to be more activated than other times of the year, um, which, which we can find very interesting in there as well. So again, right now we're on the the waning moon, so a lot, for a lot of people, what they're experiencing right now, and I kind of look at the heart chakra, it's that neutral, it's that one that can, can transform. <laughs> it's like the great translator and transformer of all the other chakras, in a way. Um, but when we look at these lower chakras and what's going on with people right now, if they're not willing to receive love into their life, if they're cutting loving energy off you know a lot of times people are giving that loving energy out there and people are not listening they're not paying attention they're not receiving it and this is one of those those tough things that that it can be getting put out there and what happens if we're not accepting loving energy if we're not working with the loving vibrations particularly since the sun is in leo particularly since we had the lion's gate portal open uh, last week, things like that, particularly being in the midst of these super moons, um, things like that. What we're seeing is we're seeing, uh, when we don't deal with that energy, we're seeing a lot of swelling in the abdomen area. We're seeing digestive disorders come up. Um, we're seeing different things as far as people feeling burned out, uh, things like that. So there's a variety of things that are happening if we don't honor that heart energy coming into the lower chakras. And and on the waning moon where we can be more emotional sometimes, it's hard for a lot of people to sit and receive and just listen. You know, most people are so used to talk, 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 or keeping their minds so busy that they don't pause and actually listen and pay attention to what's happening. And so when they don't do that, again, they'll get these other things. And if we're not processing things, that will certainly affect our other chakras as well. And, and I'll get into that because each one, um, as I mentioned in the, in the part before the break, you know, they're, they're separate and they're their own centers, but at the same time, they're interconnected with all the others and they can be impacted by, each one can be impacted by the others in that process. So as we open this up, you know, we can see these different things and, and these are just things that start to happen with each of the chakras, and I'm going to go through this as, as I go through each of the seven primary ones, that we have different things that will physically result in our body if we're not taking care of them on our own. The body is one of those things that if we're not paying attention to the signs and the symbols and the dreams and, and the things that are coming our way and we're not being responsible in our actions and we're not being proactive in our life, then things start to manifest through the physical body because that starts to become the only way that it can get our attention. Um, it, so the body will scream louder and louder and louder and break down and break down and break down until we pay attention and do something about it. Now the key starts to come in, how do you really learn how to read the body by using, for example, the chakras in, in it because each one governs in a different area of life. Each one has a piece to it that can be very, very powerful. And as we learn to understand what each one has for its energy vibration and 
the areas of life that it governs, then we can really open some big doors to understanding and to working with our life in a proactive way and working in harmony with our spiritual and soulful self. And as we do this, of course, that's going to work on improving different things that we have for working with other people along the way. So, like I said, the energy, they're they're not just energy centers. (laughs) Yes, they're energy centers, but there's so much more than that to them. Um, when we when we look at each of these pieces, so so there is that inter, interaction, and I find a lot of times if one chakra is hurting, um, we'll get a lot of overcompensation in the other chakras, or there's almost always another chakra or energy center that is connected with it, that is trying to grab our attention, and that's where we start to expand our understanding as well. First, we look at the individual chakras. But then we look at, okay, when we've got more than one chakra area being triggered, then what are we going to do about that? Because that's going to give us more information to read and to understand what's happening. Um, So they're they're really like little Akashic records and, and little pieces of like, they're like little chapters of books. And, and, and as you put them together, you end up with a whole book or you end up with a whole set of knowledge uh, about things. And it takes practice. You know, and, and it's always refining how it comes about for us. So um, I do want to kind of delve into this and I do want to kind of get going at looking at each of the individual chakras and we'll do kind of a little overview of um, different aspects with them. And there's there's different ways that I find we can work with the chakras and people wonder, well, how do I activate my chakras? How do I get them open? And, and of course, we have meditation. We have visualization techniques that we can work with. Um, we can do movement of light energy through our body. Some people will do what's called awakening the kundalini, um, and that has to do with drawing on the energy from the root chakra and bringing it up through the spine. Um, that That's a process which... Uh, could take a whole nother other show <laughs> to to talk about that kundalini energy. I had somebody ask me that uh, earlier today. They go, "Are you going to get into the kundalini?" And <laughs> and I said, "Well, I'm probably going to mention it, <laughs> but to really delve into the kundalini is a different thing." And we, it's it's important that if you've never worked with that kundalini energy, because it is such this huge raw based passionate power and that's something you, you're wanting to explore, I do suggest that you work with somebody when you first start to do that or you have somebody nearby because the energy can raise so much very rapidly and there's a lot of people that find it to be too intense too fast with it and there is caution and it can be it can be overwhelming and when I say that, it can raise a huge amount of emotions to come through. It can cause people to suddenly burst out in tears. It can cause them to become very overreactive about something. It can cause all kinds of of, uh, intense things to surface. Things that you thought were resolved could suddenly surface and and that could hit you with a really strong impact. Uh, So It's important when we look at that kundalini energy that you actually do have somebody else around or somebody present uh, at least the first time or two when you're you're starting to raise it so that they can kind of help keep that energy in check or help be there to help balance out the, the emotions and the feelings and things that are coming through. So starting off, I like to start at the root chakra. And the root chakra... Where we're going to find that is we're going to find that right at the base of our spine. And by the way, I I started to mention um, that we can work with it with these various techniques, but we can also do things like gemstones and aromatherapy and things like that, uh, herbs we can work with that will trigger into the different chakras and help to open them, purify them, cleanse them, activate them, things like that. And again, uh, like I said, I mean, I could easily do a two-hour show um, or four-hour show on each of the chakras (laughs) um, individually. But 
starting at the root chakra, and it's right at the base of our spine. And when we're working with that, the root chakra is is all that raw, primal energy. It's the passion. It's the sexual energy. But as I mentioned last week, it's also our grounding energy, and it's also our manifesting energy. It's The root chakra is tied to our money. And what's interesting about this is a lot of times when people have challenges, say, in their sexual life, a lot of times they also have challenges in their finances. <laughs> so they can often go hand in hand, and thus why they say sex can be a great healer <laughs> out there. And some people won't agree with me on that, but... Um, it really is a powerful thing, and this is why sometimes, you know, they say, you know, sometimes you just got to get that tension out. And a lot of times when we're having tension, it is built up, um, and it's not just about the sex, it's about releasing that raw primordial energy that's inside of us that's needing to be activated. You know, that's where kids oftentimes come from, and it's oftentimes where our vital energy is coming from when we talk about having energy to do things and to move forward in the world and we talk about the chi a lot of times it's developing out of that root chakra and when that root chakra is activated like we know you know when we have those passions and those desires and that sensuality running through us and and all of those great feelings it's almost like we're unstoppable in a way because it releases that manifesting, it connects with the vibration of money in a very open way when that chakra is open. So people who are having money issues or financial things or job things happening or even things in their home environment, struggles around their house or their living conditions, you want to really take a look at your root chakra. And that would be the chakra that you would want to work with. Now, again, we're on the waning moon right now, so the moon is decreasing. We're down to uh, coming up this weekend, we reach the the quarter moon, the last quarter moon of the moon cycle. And this is a time to really focus on releasing the blocks that we have about sexuality, about, you know, sexual relationships or intimate relationships. This also deals with intimacy. And when we look at intimacy, that can also be connected with our heart chakra and our third eye chakra uh, in there. And so when we're struggling on those levels with relationships, um, a lot of times what will open this chakra up is simply taking a walk or any kind of physical exercise. It triggers the same way sexual energy does. So for those people that are saying, hey, I'm really not interested in that whole sexual life thing right now, great, go get some exercise, go walk. Go do something like that because it will open it up in a very similar fashion. Obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same, but in a very similar fashion, it will do that. Um, And so that's that's the one that we want to focus on. It's that childlike enthusiasm. It's that unbridled passion that just allows you to, to be out there and be you and to burst forward in that exuberance. So if you're feeling really drained physically, you want to take a look at that root chakra as well. So when we when we look at, you know, how do I get rid of those blocks or how do I manifest, you know, we can we can work again on either either cycle and we want to take a look, for example, right now where it's waning and say and get down and get real with yourself and say, what are my blocks? What is it about money that's that I'm afraid of? Where do I have the mental concepts that are are inhibiting that flow. Do I do I look at rich people and I have a resentment against them? Do I have a jealousy of them? Do you know what is it? You know, where's my deprivation attitude, so to say? And and there's going to be one if you if you don't have a comfortable flow of money in your life. There's going to be a deprivation there. Okay, it's going to be like the the animal that is is operating on survival. And when we're operating on survival, we're operating from fear. So there's something there that we're fearing. And and this is another aspect that the root chakra governs. It governs fear. 
inside of us. So if we're dealing with a lot of fear, we want to go in and really nurture that root chakra. We want to give it some loving energy. And, and it doesn't have to be sexual energy, but we want to give it loving energy because we want to, when we fill it with love, we can pull it out of the fear and turn it into that great manifester that we talked about last week. So the root chakra affects so much in our personal lives, in our physical human lives, in what's happening in our physical realm. And when we look at the root chakra, if we want to coordinate gemstones with it, we're going to be looking for those gemstones that are black or dark red in color. So you're talking your garnets, your rubies, uh, you're talking um, obsidian, talking smoky quartz, things like that that are very deep in color, um, very intense. This is the deep inner self in a way as well. And so the, you can work with that. When we look at aromatherapy things, we're going to be looking at those really deep earthy scents. So like your, your sandalwoods, your musk. Um, you know, those things that have the deep, rich earth tones to them. Those are going to be the patchouli. Patchouli would be another great one um, for working with that chakra. So it's normally a very deep red color, and you can visualize a deep red color in that area also to ignite the energy. Now, when the energy in that chakra gets, gets ignited, A lot of people are going to feel some sexual energy. (laughs) It's natural as it opens up in there. It's natural to feel that. Now, that's where some of the kundalini and the tantric practices come in because they teach you how to harness that energy. And we want to take that energy then and use it to be able to create or to manifest. Um, You know, uh, there's there's a variety of different aspects in that. And again, because the the show is so short and I could go into a whole whole thing on that as well. Um, But you you want to find ways to learn how to harness that energy and and don't be afraid to tune into that. It's okay to feel the passion and to feel the sensuality that's there. It's just a matter of using that in a responsible way. Now, as we move on up in the chakra base, what we've got is we've got the, what we call the sacral chakra. And the sacral chakra is usually about an inch or so, one to two inches, depends on your body type, below the belly button. So it's in between kind of the belly button and the tail of the spine. Now, when we look at this chakra, this is a chakra that a lot of people don't pay attention to. And I think it was Dr. Dorothy Nattermeyer, I want to say, that I had on my show last year, and she gave a great exercise in this, or... Maybe it was somebody else, actually. (laughs) I'm drawing a little bit of a blank on that, but it is in the archives, and they talked a little bit about this this center. Now, the sacral center is like our great processing center, and a lot of people don't pay attention to this one. They kind of jump over. It's like, yeah, I feel the solar plexus a lot or the heart energy a lot or the third eye energy gets to buzzing a lot. They notice a lot of the other chakras. A lot of people don't notice their sacral chakra, and... What's interesting about that is because it is the center of processing. So that means all the stuff that we don't like to hear, all the stuff we're not liking that's coming in from other people, um, the stuff that we're trying to run away from, the fears that we're trying to ignore, all of those types of things get held up in that sacral chakra. And what happens there, again, that's where we get the big bloating in the stomach, that's where we get the indigestive issues, that's where we get the weight gain issues, that's where our physical body will start to trigger things like diabetes or cortisol issues that are going on in it. Um, So the, the sacral chakra really is, if we've got things that are happening there, that's where we can sometimes get the belly aches going on, it kind of depends, you have to pay attention whether the bellyache is low or whether it's higher up around the diaphragm. Um, So those kind of nauseous relating things, that's a big sign and a big symbol to say there's something coming in at you that you're not dealing with, okay? And 
if you're not dealing with that, it's going to get stuck and it's going to swell and you're going to have problems and that's going to start affecting all the organs and all the systems in the body. So that processing center, and this is why you'll find a lot of people that do coaching work out there, that work with the energy centers, that work with the chakras, that do different things, they put a big emphasis on facing things and they put a big emphasis on the processing aspect. Because if we don't process it and then we try to go out in the world and create things and to do things, it's kind of like sitting down at that Thanksgiving dinner where you've overstuffed yourself with three times the food that you would normally eat and then try to go run. You're not going to feel really good. You're not going to feel really good if you do that. So in that aspect, that's a center we really want to pay attention to. And if we get really good at processing what's happening in our life, and we get really good, and that means going in there and going, okay, this is happening, maybe it's not feeling comfortable, but you know what, I'm going to surrender to this process, and I'm going to surrender to this experience, and I'm going to appreciate it, and I'm going to love it for the lessons it teaches me, no matter how challenging it is to get through it, and I'm going to be responsible and take responsibility for having created this on whatever level I created it, soul, past life, DNA, genetic, whatever it is, and I'm going to work with it. And as we do this, it's very funny. You know, this would be like the great weight loss. <laughs> this would be the great energetic weight loss plan right here, which is be to process and to, to deal with life, so to say. Because uh, as you do that, that's exactly what's going to happen. And it's funny if you get very uh, proactive in, <laughs> in processing uh, well, you'll find that you'll you'll basically keep the weight melted off. <laughs> your body, the metabolism will get really strong in your body. And you'll find a lot of things function very, very well. You'll find that things detoxify very easily in your body. Um, so these are big signs to see. You know, again, when we look at this center, if if you're getting those symptoms physically, it's saying, hey, stop, pay attention. You need to do some of this inner work now, okay? Um, now, likewise, you know, of course, that's a creation center as well because we know between the root chakra and the sacral chakra, that's where life is created. So if we have those two chakras really open and doing well, guess what? Whether you're looking at actual physical childbirth or whether you're looking at projects and ventures that you want to bring into the world, those have got to be really open and flowing in their energy, okay? And and if you're struggling with getting things out there in the world with projects, uh, you know, among some of the basics of are you doing the marketing or whatever else, but if you're, if you're doing lots and lots of things and you're still not seeing it manifest, you might want to go back and work with these two chakras because they're your creation centers. They're your processing, they're your creation centers. So when we look at that sacral chakra, we're looking at the color orange, basically. So orange is our key color there. And when you think about it, even the fruit, orange, is a great digestive. That's why you see it in a lot of Asian countries. They'll actually give it to you as a dessert to digest with um, that little bit of citric acid, as they say, in there, um, balancing the pH system out in there. So we look at a nice, deep orange color, kind of, I like to think of kind of a sunset orange in there or a burnt orange kind of color, but you can also use brighter oranges as well in the coloring in there. And, and when we talk about these colors, it's really great because you can even just hold your hands over the chakra centers and visualize the color going in there to that chakra center. So orange is the color there. And when we look at gemstones, we're going to look at things, we're going to find things like carnelian is going to be a great one to work with. Um, 
topaz is one that could be worked with if you've got a golden topaz or an orange topaz color. Um, citrine is another one that can be worked with in that chakra center. Uh, goldstone is another one that could be worked with. Sunstone is another one that could be worked with. There's multiple ones there. And, of course, the gemstones all have an amazing amount of different energetic principles and properties themselves. So depending on what you're trying to process in your life, you might want to look at a gemstone that also uh, correlates with that. Now, when we look at that processing center, uh, we're looking, when we look at scents, we're looking at citrus scents. So we're looking at our oranges, our lemons, our um, bergamot is kind of a floral citrus scent to it. All can work very well with the um, with the sacral chakra in there. And again, you can you you always want to have a, a carrier oil that you're using your essentials in. You can put them, you know, and then put a little bit of the essential into the carrier oil, or or buy an oil that's designed for that, or has has the scents that will work for that chakra. And, you know, because the oils and things, I love working with them, actually, because they've each got their own energy vibrations, and they can create a really nice um, healing or correcting kind of vibrational energy uh, into to that center, into that area. And sometimes if we're struggling breaking through and we're not getting the insights or we're not seeing the insights, something as simple as a crystal or a gemstone or, a, or an oil can help trigger the energy to help get us open up enough to see the signs and the symbols. But again, if you're dealing with that chakra and you're dealing with symptoms from that chakra, I really suggest just taking some time to pause and reflect and to rest so that your body has a time to do it. Eat lighter. It's kind of a funny thing, but yeah, eating lighter, eating pure, and it will. you'll find that when your body's processing physically, you'll process on the emotional and the mental levels as well, and the spiritual levels. So they all interrelate with each other. Now, as we move up and we, we get into working with the solar plexus, now that's one that I think most people feel. <laughs> that's, a, that's the one that's pretty predominant for a lot of people. And the solar plexus chakra is right about where our diaphragm is. So it's kind of right in that rib cage area, um, right where the rib cage is kind of meeting. That's that place where if somebody was to punch you in the stomach, that's where you're going to feel it, is in the diaphragm area. So the diaphragm area, and what's interesting with that is that it literally can take the wind out of us. That is our breathing. So well, automatically we want to associate breathing issues with the heart chakra, in reality a lot of times breathing issues are going to be related to the solar plexus chakra. And so we might be dealing with that if we're dealing with belly aches, if we feel like we're not getting enough air in our lungs, these sorts of things, then we're dealing with that solar plexus chakra. And the solar plexus chakra is related to communications that we're receiving from other people. Yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> because communications during all of these transformational planetary influences that we've had going on has been absolutely huge. And we've had to deal with listening to a lot of things that we just don't want to hear. And so this, this center is going to get triggered. If you're getting things that you don't want to hear, if you're not feeling safe around somebody, right? We talk about butterflies in our stomach when we're connecting with somebody, and that's when it, we, we're getting those happy, rosy feelings uh, from somebody, and we're like, oh, I love being in that person's presence and things like that. We get those, those uh, it gets to do this kind of relaxed feeling in the solar plexus, and it gets to be this sort of excited feeling, and that's the solar plexus connecting a little bit with the root chakra in there. But then other times we'll get around somebody and we'll start to feel, again, that kind of nauseous feeling. We'll start to feel like somebody's kind of punched us in the stomach a little bit. Um, you know, we'll, we'll feel a little unsettled right in that diaphragm area. And oftentimes that can be a warning for us. It can be a warning that 
we're allowing a lot of negative people around us. It can be a warning that uh, somebody is not being honest with us. It can be a warning sign that that uh, we need to pay attention and be extra aware and that uh, the people that are around us or the environment we're in may not be the best environment. And I actually see this a lot with people, for example, when I'm working with clients and they'll tell me, they go, you know, I just don't know how much longer I can handle this job that I'm working, for example. And I go in there and I dread going in and I don't like it and I really feel like I need to change jobs. And so they'll they'll do it and they say, and now it's at a point where I feel sick every time I go there. And And I've had people say this about being around certain people or friends or family or things like that as well. And they literally will get sick feeling. And as they do that, that sick feeling, and what that is is because that's a negative energy that's coming in through the solar plexus. So our solar plexus is our big filter. That's our big receiving center for what we're taking in from other people. So whatever is coming to us from others is going to come into that center of the body. And that's where I tell people, I say, well, you need to change jobs. <laughs> you need to either process it or change jobs a lot of times. And it, and it sounds very simplified and maybe a little harsh at times, but when it comes down to it, that's what it is. It's saying this situation, this dynamic needs to change. You need to either step out of it, you need to talk to this person and work through it, or you need to, you know, see how you're going to deal with the situation. But it's a great sign of telling us that, hey, this is not the best place for you to be, and you need to make a change in one way or another. Uh, And and I find that, and I've had that experience, and some people say, well, I don't know what to do about it because I can't stop being around these people or, or things like that. And a lot of times what I'll do especially if I'm feeling a lot of negative energy and maybe I can't step out of that room right away or things like that, I'll actually just put my hands, it's really simple, just put my hands right over that center. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put my left hand over my solar plexus center and I'll put my right hand right over my chakra, my heart chakra center. So I'm taking whatever is negative and I'm sending it to my heart space. And what that does is it automatically triggers in my soul, my mind, my spiritual, that automatically will activate my higher self to come from a loving space. And what it's doing is saying, I'm not going to take this in. It literally creates a sort of little um, barrier or block from what is coming in from other people. And what it does is it, it tells your your own self, I'm here, I'm paying attention, and you're okay, and I'm going to keep you safe. So it's a very subtle way to send a message through to your brain, and you could do this also with the sacral chakra or any chakra and send that energy right into the heart chakra and open that up and and send it there because when we send it to the heart chakra, what we're doing is the heart chakra operates on a vibrational level of love. And once it's in love, no negativity can exist in a vibration of love which is why we send it to the heart chakra, because the heart chakra is that great transformer. It can shift it from a negative to a positive energy there. So that's like a five-second, 30-second thing that you can do, and if you just breathe through those chakras, then you know what, you, what you're going to get is you're going to get an automatic relief. And I've had people do this. I've worked with this with people in... in uh, some of the the live events that I do, and they were surprised. And when their fears came up, I said, "Take this and do this." And every time their fear would start to come up, they'd start to work with it. And pretty soon, they didn't have that fear because they constantly were getting themselves taken care of. So when we look at the solar plexus, we've got the color yellow with that, and um, and. And when we're looking at the yellow, I always see this as more of a very bright yellow color, kind of lemony yellow or sun yellow color uh, that's in there. So we're looking at more of our 
our golden labradorite is a great one to use in the Center for Gemstone, for example. Um, you know, think of your yellow stones that are in there, and you could you could deal with yellow jasper in this, particularly if you need some grounding to go with things. Uh, you could occasionally use a smoky quartz if it's on the lighter side, but uh, I would stick with more of those golden stones. Some of the sunstones could work. You could have some overlap that way. Uh, topaz, uh, the yellow topaz could work well in here. Um, and, and yeah, some of the orange stones, some of the carnelians and stuff could still work well with the solar plexus, I would say, on this. Um, Scents, you're going very light. I like, when I look at the solar plexus, I like the light florals in a lot of ways, like a sunflower type scent, something along those lines. You could do a lemon, and here lemon is great for purifying and cleansing out the negative energy. So if you're having to be around a lot of aggressive negative people, lemon could be really good. But sunflower is really great too because it works in coordination with the heart chakra to lighten up the energy, to make it uh, a little more playful in its energy. And that's an easier space to be in a lot of times uh, if we choose to do it when we're interacting with other people. So that's a huge, huge center to pay attention to. Now, as we move on up, the heart chakra, and that's right in the chest region, normally about if you were to, you know, pledge that allegiance or whatever you want to say, um, in there, if you were to put your hand over your heart, so to say, that's about where your heart chakra is, um, in the center of that chest region there. And the heart chakra is... So powerful because, again, this is the master bridge between everything. So the heart chakra, I like to, to, to think of the heart chakra as the great transformational energy. Oftentimes it's going to get triggered when we've done something, for example, that pleases or hurts our higher self or our soul self or our spiritual self. And as we do that, that becomes very powerful because it triggers our emotions. It's our feeling place. And it's where, you know, our feelings connect us to being human, okay? And and it's not that the, the soul is totally void of per se feelings. Some people will say that it is um, so much as it doesn't feel it the way we feel it in a human body. So uh, the heart chakra is a great indicator of whether we're on our path or not. So when a lot of people are asking those questions, I don't know if this is the path for me. I don't know if this is the direction I should be going. I don't know if this is the person I should be with. Listen to your heart. It's, it's a cliche phase, or phrase in one sense, right? <laughs> Just listen to your heart. Um, because your heart will get light or heavy in its feeling. It will get a sense of relaxation and ease and expansiveness about it, or it will get a sense of heaviness and restriction and tightness around it. And when we get that tightness in the chest uh, area, it's oftentimes working with the diaphragm because it oftentimes means that we're betraying ourselves in order to do something to please somebody else. That's a pretty big one right there. Okay, It means that we're betraying ourselves or ignoring ourselves in order to do something to please somebody else. So you want to think about that if you have that coming up. And we see this a lot of times. I was working with somebody earlier today, and they were mentioning what their passion was. And they were just light up And when they'd talk about their passion. And they would say, but, you know, my parents want me to you know, take something that's practical, have something practical to fall back on. And, and I found that kind of amusing, and you could just feel the heart chakra energy close up on this person because they were feeling like they were having to sacrifice themselves in order to please their parents. And, and it's tough, especially when we're dealing with family in those situations. But when we listen to that, that is our truly our indicator as to whether – we're on track with something. Because if we get those heart aches, those heart pains, we're not on track. 
and it, and it's hard because when that comes up, it's oftentimes because say we're in a relationship, and the relationship we're not receiving from the relationship in equal to what we're giving or what we want to, or we may have to be admitting that it's time to shift out of that relationship, and that relationship has gone as far as it can go, and we need to make a change. Um, and, and it's hard sometimes because sometimes in following what our soul needs, it means letting go of other things that could also in a way be dear to our heart. Um, and this is the center again. We experience the emotions. And what's interesting is the heart center is the only chakra center that allows us to both send and receive. It's that center one, and it allows us to both send and receive in it. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. And this chakra, whatever is happening in this chakra, almost always is going to trigger another chakra. If we're not honoring our path, if we're not honoring the heart energy, if we're not remaining in the love energy, we're going to see those lower chakras oftentimes uh, get triggered and have some issues there. If we're operating very fully in our heart, most of the other centers are all going to be open and flowing. If our heart center, and, and so that's why it's always like focusing on that heart center could be a very powerful center because it could very easily clear all the other chakras if we wanted to focus on that. Um, if we're living too much in our upper chakras and not honoring the physical realm, then we're also going to get a sort of disconnect there. Most people would think, oh, if I'm living in all the upper spiritual realms, my heart chakra is automatically going to be open. But not necessarily because what we find with that is oftentimes people will be so disconnected that there's no sense of feeling and then they end up having a disconnect with other people. And that disconnect with other people then, what that does is it means they're not receiving. And that's where we start to find the people who are in the spiritual space and they're not getting <laughs> they're not getting the resources or the support that they need because they're too much in the upper chakras. So they need to ground out and have a little fun on this planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the summary of it in that. Um, so definitely it's a it's an important chakra to pay attention to because almost always it's it's gonna be influenced no matter what's happening in our life. If any other chakra is off, our heart center is probably having something going on with it. Um, so it's 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 the it's kind of the great, like I said, the great transformer of everything. It's the great connector of everything. So if we're feeling disconnected, if we're feeling things are out of synchronicity, we want to pay attention to our heart chakra as well. Uh, very, very powerful. And what we know is when our power, you know, when that heart chakra is open, everything flows easily into our life. Everything opens in a very expansive way and we get that very expansive feeling and that's where things start to happen effortlessly for us. Now the heart chakra has two things to it. Um, It deals with both pink and it deals with both and also green and the coloring of it which gives us a huge diversity of stones from morganite to, um, to of course rose quartz is in there but we also have things like malachite jade jadeite um, are all part of those things which are just a couple of the basic stones you could look at um, for the the heart chakra centers in there and uh, so working with that if you're if you're ever confused and you're not really sure go straight to the heart center and just focus on ex- expanding that when we do that we will connect with our spiritual true self. And uh, and I have something saying purple energy plates. <laughs> and so the you know that aspect looking at the heart chakra is is really, really important um, 
if you're confused and you're not sure what else is going on. Uh, if you open that up, it will automatically clear. The throat chakras were moving up. Now, the throat chakra for men, they're going to find that right about where the Adam's apple is, maybe just slightly lower. It kind of sits right to the top, just a little above our collarbone area on the front of the neck uh, in there. Now, this is one that's very, very interesting to pay attention to, okay? And um, this is something that, that can be very interesting because our throat chakra deals with our voice, what we share with the world, what we put out there, our ability to speak, and to sing and to communicate with other people. So where the solar plexus was the communications we received in, the throat chakra is the communications that we're going to send out to people. Now, this center I find very interesting because it is definitely one of the aspects of the body that does not lie. (laughs) And yet it deals with truth and lies. Are you speaking your truth? Are you speaking your voice? And what we'll see is a lot of people, if they're not speaking up for themselves, they'll start having sore throats, they'll start coughing a lot, their throat will tighten up. We'll also see things like this if people are not telling the truth in something. Uh, You'll notice that with a lot of, uh, if you pay attention to politicians and people that are speaking, if they are knowingly telling a lie, they'll start coughing. They'll start choking up a lot. And and I've watched this a lot in in public speakers on things, um, listening to that. So it's kind of a a fun thing when you're paying attention to people. Now, some people say, oh, yeah, but they're just a smoker, right? Well, what's interesting about that is, is if you look at smokers, of course, there's plenty of smokers who will appear to be speaking their voice, but they're speaking it from a place of fear. Uh, They're speaking it from places where they're not really secure. They're relying on addictions. And we'll see a lot of people that have addictive personalities or addictions in their lives, their throat chakra will close down and get tight on them. Uh, If people feel powerless to speak up, very timid people, their throat chakra will oftentimes be, be shut down on them. And for people like that that need to gain some personal strength, they need to get their voice out there, um, they're going to want to work with, uh, I would say, blue colors, blue colors in there, things like sodalite, um, things like lapis is another good one to work with, some of those aspects, and I should mention also, I should jump back a little bit to the heart chakra. Tourmaline, like watermelon tourmaline, is a great stone to work with for the heart chakra. Um, and I didn't mention aromatherapy aspects with the heart chakra. So um, rose oil is one of my favorites, or rose water is one of my favorites for the heart chakra, by the way. Uh, the throat chakra, and we're dealing with more of that blue area. Wow. Wow. Scents are a little bit different. Now we're starting to talk about, actually, I like jasmine on the throat chakra. Ironically, jasmine really seems to open it up and and lighten that energy up. Uh, Wisteria is one. Almost any of the upper chakras you can use wisteria for. And just a little dab right there in that throat area. So like if you have an interview that's coming up, If you have to give a talk about something, it's great to have that little dab of something uh, right there on the throat chakra area for you. Uh, Very, very powerful. So you can see how these different things are interrelating. As we move up to the third eye chakra, most people are really familiar with the third eye chakra. It's right there in the center of our forehead kind of area, right between the eye area. And... That chakra is related to our intuition. That's where people who have psychic energy uh, will have things going on. They're usually very in tune with that. Uh, That's where our dreams and our visions open up. That's where we get the insights beyond what our physical eyes are seeing in our environment. And 
what I find with this is that if you're, you're finding you're very blocked in your psychic energy or your intuitive energy, you can actually just put your finger up there and rub on that a little bit. You can rub that either in a circular direction or just rub it up and down a little bit. And this is something that animals really attune to. Um, a lot of animals will really love to to have right there on their forehead rubbed. Um, it's it, it's an opening, you know. It's an opening that gives strength, that gives power, it gives insight. So it opens your senses up to pick up more than just, like I said, what your physical senses are seeing or or adapting to in there. Um, so that's a great way, and I find also when that, that chakra gets very active, um, if you get a sense of, of that chakra itching, I notice a, a lot of psychics, myself included, will get an itching there when they're getting a message that they really need to pay attention to. And that's where you need to really stop and look around your environment and go, okay, what am I standing in right now? What is the time? Well, I just happened to look down, 11.22. There you go. <laughs> I just scratched the, the third eye chakra, and there it is, 11.22, master numbers, um, which is telling me the angels are with me, I'm on the right track, <laughs> and uh, and I'm in divine flow right now. So um, it, it's very funny when we do that. Uh, when you get that itchy, itching and things going on, you definitely want to pay attention to that. It's It's our sign that says, hey, we're trying to get a message through to you, pay attention to us. And there is something that you were thinking about when it started itching. Um, look around. The answer is right there in front of you somewhere. Okay. And with this, um, I really like to work with things. Uh, lavender can be good with this. Um, and, yeah, one, two, three, <laughs> where... One of our chatters are um, these patterns. Uh, you know, wisteria is also good here again for this. We're looking for very light, airy um, aromas when we when we deal with this um, with the chakra areas, and so that can be very, very powerful as well. With it, we're looking at more dark purple, indigo kind of colors in there, so that super dark blue or that purple. Amethyst is certainly one that can be worked with on this chakra center. Uh, dark blue numite is one that could be worked with on this chakra center. Um, Sujolite could be worked with uh, on this chakra center. Charorite could be worked with here. Sujolite and charorite could also be worked with on the crown. Uh, chakra, and um, and then with the crown chakra as we move up to that, that's just a little above the head region there. That's where you know if you were looking at a picture of an angel and the halo was there, it would be right about where the halo would go <laughs> in there. And our crown chakra is really our connection with our divine self. It's a connection with divine will, um, spirit, in there. And sometimes we get that sense up and above around us. Now, here again, this is another chakra that a lot of people, even if they're very, very spiritually attuned, they don't oftentimes feel the crown chakra. And that's the chakra that just doesn't worry about anything. It's elevated. It's not worrying about anything that's happening in the physical life. And sometimes it's really fun to connect with that because when we do, that's kind of, a lot of times what we find in mindfulness practices is we'll be connecting with the the uh, crown chakra there. And and that's where we just completely surrender, we completely just get present in the moment and we don't worry about literally a thing else. Okay, it is the divine self. It has no worries, it has no concerns. Um, it is in alignment with divine will and that... That is a surrendering a process. So the crown chakra is not oftentimes too heavily affected by things, I would say, um, at least not on the earthly realm. <laughs> so it, it's kind of there to kind of help keep channeling the inf information in. I kind of like to call it the big funnel to connect with the greater universe. 
uh, to bring in energy for the other chakras there. Um, and I do want to get to an exercise, too, tonight before we run out of time. I do want to give that for you. But I want to mention also that the chakras are not connected and the energy of the chakras are not just connected in those specific centers, but they're also connected in other areas of our body. For example, our fingers and our toes. And uh, each toe has a connection to a chakra center. So if you have something going on with, with uh, for example, if you have something going on, and the toes and the fingers can be reversed a little bit, but let's say the middle toe on your foot, that's going to relate to your solar plexus chakra, and the middle finger will relate to your solar plexus chakra. Your little toes and little fingers are going to relate to the root chakras, for example. Um, so there's there's some different aspects with that. Your your ring finger will relate to the heart chakra. Um, ironically, though, your second toe next to your big toe is what relates to the heart chakra. So uh, definitely want to pay attention to that. So really, we have the chakras interrelate with a lot of things, and they're aligned with a lot of other things. So you might have something coming through that finger say like a, a middle finger or a middle toe, and you might stub that middle toe, and it's it's a sign for you to pay attention to your solar plexus chakra. And you want to you wanna give that some attention and take a look again at what are your connections with people? What are you receiving from other people? And maybe where do you need to kind of put some people out of your life a little bit or or change the dynamics with them in there? with that. So what I want to do is I want to do just a little um, easy kind of quick visualization, I would say, with the chakras here. And again, we've talked about if you've missed information on this, we've kind of been working with the seven primary chakras tonight because the information is so vast. Uh, Again, I could just spend weeks and hours going through the the different chakras and the different dynamics of them. But... um, you want to go back and listen because we've been talking about a little bit different oils and gemstones that can be used with the chakras. And, uh, you know, gemstones, you can lay those on your body um, to work with them. I, I've done different things. You can, you know, if you're working with the upper ones, like your heart chakra or your throat chakra, or things like that, you can uh, you can also work with, like, jewelry or things like that. Uh, that's where you can work with even jewelry on your fingers or your toes and and that could affect the different chakra centers as well for you so there's there's lots of different pieces like that and that's why we want to pay attention what are we putting on our hands if we're wearing toe rings what are you know what toe do we have it on and how is that affecting these centers and of course things that i haven't had time to get into tonight is is different things that the chakras also relate to different organs in our body and different aspects in our body, that way our physical body. Uh, We do have actually a little energy center between the heart and the throat chakra uh, in there, and that area affects, for example, our pineal gland, which is a huge um, gland that is being worked with with all the energetic upgrades that we're receiving uh, through the universe and the divine and the portal openings right now. And the pineal, of course, uh, works with our higher consciousness and self in that as well. So lots of great pieces there. But let's do a quick little little ex- exercise here. And I like to do this. You know, this is a great way to start the day. It could be a great way to finish the day because as we go through the day, of course, we're getting all these different little pieces from people. But this is just a great way to really cleanse the chakras in in a fairly easy uh, manner with it. So what you want to do is when we look at this, we want to go ahead and just make sure that your arms, your legs, or things are not crossed. You want to um, find a comfortable place, whether you're laying down or sitting. And, you know, if you're sitting, again, just don't cross things. You want to have your back straighter. And I kind of like sitting, actually, because it creates a vertical energy flow. And the vertical energy flow is, is, gives us that connection with divine energy very easily. And you're going to want to breathe from your diaphragm. And again, breath is a really quick, easy way to clear that solar plexus 
chakra out. Um, it's a great way to release what we've been receiving from people. So go ahead and um, just focus on that. And what we're trying to do is we want to we want to slow our breathing down. And when you're breathing from your diaphragm, when you inhale, your stomach is going to expand. And when you exhale, your stomach's going to go back in again. So let's just go ahead and take a few deep breaths to kind of get our body relaxed and settled down. And just focus on slowing that breathing down a little bit. And please don't do this if you're doing other things or driving a vehicle. <laughs> we don't want you crashing. It's very easy to... Um, I don't want you to get it hurt or anything like that, and I don't want you hurting anybody else. So do this only when you can actually focus on it. And just focus. And you'll notice as you take those deeper breaths and you focus on slowing your breathing down, your whole body will start to relax. Just keep letting your body relax. And now what I want you to do is to visualize the sun right up in, in the sky. And some people, if you're not a visual person, you can feel just feel the sensation of the sun being in the sky above you. And just shining down directly on top of your head. And just feel that energy bathing around you. Now, feel that sun move behind you. And as it moves behind you, feel or see it, whatever works for you, burst into rays. And each one of those rays goes into your, each one of your seven key chakras. So from the root to the sacral, the solar plexus, to the heart chakra, to the throat chakra, to the third eye chakra, to the crown, and it's coming in from the back of you right now. And just feel those rays penetrating right in through you from the sun. Like it's creating a beam of light going through you in each one of those chakras. And as this is happening and as the energy is pouring into the chakras and, and going through them, You'll feel maybe a sense of lightness coming up for you. You'll feel um, a sense of maybe starting to feel a little more energized throughout your body, uh, perhaps a little more relaxed, a little more at ease. Sometimes people will even get a little gurgling going on in their body, which is the energy moving. 
things shifting, releasing, clearing. And just focus with that as it's coming in from the back. What is what is it that you want to release right now? Is you pay attention and see is there one shock where maybe it feels stuck, maybe it feels like that ray isn't getting through, and I want you to pay attention to what that chakra is, which chakra it is, and which one is doing that, because you'll want to take note of that so that you can work with it. And if you have a chakra that's feeling blocked like that, just Stop and send it love. Let the love filter down from your heart chakra or up from your heart chakra. And if it's your heart chakra itself, and you can draw on both the crown and the root chakra together, and that will create a balancing for it. And now let's take that sun and and see that sun move around up and over you and be right in front of you. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to see those beams of light come right out of the sun right into each of the chakra centers, going from the root chakra all the way up to the crown chakra. Just a burst of rays coming right in. Just feeling it pour in the cleansing energy, allowing anything that's feeling a little off-centered or unsettled to just absorb the warmth of that sun. The sun is the divine light in this case. And as it's coming through from the front of us, should be starting to feel more and more energy come up in your body. Almost like you're you're starting to feel that confidence come through. You're starting to get clarity, sense of clarity. The mind doesn't feel so distracted. It feels like it can focus. This is kind of like an energy bath (laughs) or shower, whatever your preference is. Just really doing a lot of cleansing. It's really just making everything refreshed and renewed. Opening up our confidence energy, our lighthearted energy. And then go ahead and take a minute to just express your gratitude to the divine, to the light of the sun, and to thank it for sharing its energy with you and for opening up these chakras. And we'll do one more cleansing before we go. And visualize, if you will, or feel a white light at the base of your spine where your root chakra is. And just as you're breathing, just let that white light gently pulsate right up your spine. And as you're doing this, think about any intention that you need to put out there. This could be anything that you're needing insights to, answers to, 
something that you're wanting to bring out into the world, um, an emotion or a feeling you're wanting to share with somebody, and just feel that just gradually, very gently, very lovingly, moving up the spine with each breath. And it could just be a pure loving energy that you're choosing to send out. So it coming all the way up your spine. And as it reaches towards the top of your spine, I want you to let it keep going right on up into the top of your head. And then let it go out. Picture it going out through a cone out of the top of your head and expanding out into the universe. As far as you can just let it burst out there. And knowing in doing this, this has been released now to the universe, for the universe to come in and help you, for the divine to come in and help you and your guides. And to let them know that you are willing to send from a pure state love, healing to others, healing to the universe, and healing to yourself, love to yourself. And now take a couple of breaths here. We want to focus back in, once again, on breath itself. Focus again on the physical body. And as you're ready to do so, feel free to open your eyes. Feel free to move any arms or legs or feet or anything like that with it. And if you're anything feeling anything like I'm feeling right now, you're feeling maybe kind of light, very, very light in energy, maybe even lightheaded right now. And this is the energy that's moving through you. This is a very natural state. Now, the thing that we need to be careful of with this is that with this light energy that's moving through us, we're also not maybe completely grounded, (laughs) which means you don't want to go jump in a vehicle and drive right away or operate heavy equipment or things like that. Feel free to enjoy this energy if you're not going anywhere. Um, However, it is important to know that you might have this little bit of spaciness going on. It could take some time for that energy to ground out. Uh, If you are needing to really focus and do something, you may want to drink some water You could take a bath. You could go walk on concrete or um, preferably grass some way that you can connect your feet directly with the earth and uh, and balance the energy out again a little bit. Uh, Another thing you can do is if you're feeling an excess amount of energy and you're not comfortable with it is you can picture a pole going from the base of your spine down into the earth and let the energy drain out that way, and the earth will take it and use it for something valuable, and that will also help to balance it out. Um, So those are some things. It it is when we're moving energy, and it can be an extraordinarily pleasant feeling, and I love feeling this way because it's like I just feel like I'm just bathed in so much love. (laughs) I just feel like like everything's flowing so beautifully, and I don't want to interrupt it. Um, But each person's a little bit different. And sometimes, again, you know, right now I'm feeling very clear. Like I just feel like all the pressures are off at the moment and everything's released right now and and it's got a really beautiful feeling to it. Um, And I welcome any comments from the chat room if they've experienced something during that process. For those that kind of came and went, uh, you might want to go back and start with it at the beginning and catch that energetic process. Uh, We've been talking about the chakras tonight, uh, energy centers, but there's so much more than that uh, throughout the body and how to listen and how the different energy centers are sending us messages constantly. They are communication centers. And I'm getting a a comment in that uh, somebody's feeling very really light and warm feeling that they have going through them. 
And and this is what I love about working with the sun. And as you can see, this took us maybe 15 minutes to do. They're saying also surrounded by unconditional love. Um, maybe 15 minutes to do to clear out all of our chakras. And if you, again, do this at the beginning and the end of the day, uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. But imagine going into the day just feeling all of this unconditional love and you go into the world, you're setting yourself up to have an amazing day full of blessings is what you're doing. And if you do this before you go to bed at night, you're going to sleep a lot better. You're going to get a lot more restful sleep. And it's going to clear away all of the garbage that maybe came into you during the day. If you had some challenges, if you had some frustrations, it's going to help cleanse that stuff out so that you're not continuing to carry it through day by day. We don't want to harbor all of that energy in us because then it builds and then it creates more challenges if we don't clear it out. So it's a very simple exercise. doesn't take a lot of time to do. You can come back and listen to this as much as you want. Share it with your friends because it, it is that powerful, easy way to get into the light, warm, fuzzy, unconditional love feeling <laughs> space. And that's where I am too, by the way, for the person that, that put that out there. That's what I'm feeling. It's just it, it, it's an incredible, beautiful feeling. I feel like I could go out and do anything right now um, with that. But we are starting to wrap up here towards the end of the show. And um, and I really, I really appreciate everybody who came in and experienced this live, and I do encourage you to share it. Um, next week on our show, we're going to have Greg Friedman from Inner Journey, who will be talking about a whole variety of things in his work. We're going to be talking about the importance of working with coaching or in a coaching capacity and see what his style of work is with that. Um, we're going to be looking at different aspects of, of the journeys that he does with people. Uh, like myself, he has a huge diversity in his background, and, um, and I'm really looking forward to bringing him on the show for you. And also, my books uh, are out there and released. You can check those out on my website, jessianennicholsgeorge, the number one dot com. Um, there's links there whether you're looking for ebooks or hard copy books. I will have some books with me when I'm touring on the Compassion Tour, which will be starting in as little as about three weeks. It's coming up so fast <laughs> and so quickly. And you can stay on top. Some of the events that I'm uh, handling directly, you'll find on my event site, jessianennicholsgeorge.eventbrite.com. And uh, check those out. There's lots of things. Again, I'm adding things every single day. I'm going to be traveling the entire country. So I'm going to be someplace near you, and I'm basically setting up where I will be taking private sessions in most of the locations that I'm at. Actually, I will. And if I'm not in your location but I'm traveling through your location, I would be happy to set up a live private session with you as well for integrated coaching work or uh, angel session healing work or things like that. I have a huge variety of stuff I deal with. Um, also, uh, with that, uh, I'll be doing thought song style events, which are uh, an awareness, conscious building, uh, kind of conversational style event. You can uh, learn more about those through my website. Um, and I'm also going to be dealing with um, kind of healing type activations, uh, which deal with coding and um, the coding that's set up on our grids and things like that and doing group healing events, as well as one-day events out in nature uh, where we'll be out on walking trails, hiking trails, things like that. Um, and incorporating nature in consciousness and integrated development work, highly transformational, very intense work. So if you're ready to make some changes or manifest things or just break through some stuff or, or just harmonize, just come and experience harmonizing yourself for a while. Uh, the one-day events and the seasonal events like the autumn equinox in, in Seattle and uh, also the one that's going to be going on at the turn of the year right around Halloween, um, some main time uh, in New Jersey, and then there will be another seasonal event at Zion National Park at the winter solstice. Um, but literally, I'm going to be all over. Like I said, we're talking Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Washington, D.C., um, possibly the Atlanta, Georgia area, uh, Texas, Arizona, um, I'm going to be everywhere, California. <laughs> so 
I'm going to be in an area near you, so you can follow all those. And I also put up a new video tip. You can check that out on my website, listen to archive shows there. All of that's on my website, jessianenicholsgeorgethenumber1.com. Uh, there's a great section for all of our hosts here on Main Street Universe. Uh, my August special, by the way, is 25% off my most recently released service, which is Dream and Symbols Interpretations. You can learn about that on the homepage of the website. Every day of the week, we've got stuff going on here. Sunday nights, we have Darren Bouquer, who's a reader at Madame Laveau in New Orleans, doing Spiritual Insights. Monday nights, Randy Goldberg doing Vedic Astrology. Tuesdays, Susan Weed sharing her work in herbs and natural plants. Wednesday nights, Daniel and Janice are on our flagship show, sometimes with guests, sometimes doing readings. Thursdays, Queen Mother Amaku. She's on a little bit of a break right now, but she is coming back very soon. Kevin Baird pops in and out on Fridays earlier in the day with um, Walking on the Sidewalk. He works with his Horizon Oracle's Journeys deck, a deck he created, which you can learn more about at templeofgaia.com. And then, of course, Friday nights right here, Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour. Hey, this is Jesse Ann Nichols, George. I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. And thanks for all of our listeners, not only on Blog Talk, but those coming to us through PEN, known as Pair Encounters Network, Stream Finder, Talk Stream Live, and those catching our podcast at iTunes and TuneIn.com, as well as those catching the YouTube version of our show. And I look forward to seeing you back here next week as we delve more into activating compassion. Hey, don't forget, if you've enjoyed the show this evening, share it with others. It's going to be available at the same link in our archives, and I'm going to leave you tonight with the song Yearning For, also known as Over and Over by Shemshai. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again next week, right here on Activating Compassion in the Midnight Hour. May you enjoy the rest of your weekend and have an absolutely amazing week. And if I could see what makes me blind, I would soar to the edge of my mind and to touch what seems unreal just to show you the way that I feel and we are in time with time one with season of change inside and we are in tune with the two caught in a balance of sun and moon
all we need. All that we ask for shall be received. And we see in eyes to eyes, one within love to be for the divine. And we're walking hand in hand, God in the balance of God and man. And we are in time with time, one with of changing life And we are in tune with the tune of life in circle and love in Over and over, life is your lover Learning 